facilitators add value day in, day out. It is stepping into the fire and there is just this sense of courage and internal belief that we're doing it right. If you've got more meetings, more groups, you should be looking at having more facilitators. Bring in them part-time or bring them on full-time. My APS hero, Nick Housko. How did a kid from Lane Cove interested in movies and film move from marketing to project management to eventually getting into this whole realm of facilitating for uh, our national government's public service? Well, that's a good question and it's a lengthy answer, but I'll try and thin it down. When I left school, I joined a bank for two years and that was so exciting, I decided I'd retire from banking and join the arts community. I, I went to a film and sculpture course up at Newcastle University. And in that, I came across a few people in the Bushwalking Club and then in turn, there was a thing called the Franklin River and they wanted to know if I wanted to go rafting it. I went rafting the Franklin River. And then wow. at the end of that, they decided that there was more option in sort of trying to protect this river. A small campaign was starting and I joined that campaign in 1981. And I ended up becoming film director and film producer for the Wilderness Society's Block A films. And in the first exposure to the Wilderness Society, they used facilitation to run meetings, to deliver meetings. And that was my first exposure to it. I've brought that knowledge of meetings through my commercial area where I was working in nanotechnology, where I was working in industrial design groups. It was that ability to listen, to bring people into the conversation, to moderate, then facilitate. Being able to get that conversation primed properly was something I've honed my skill at over time. 2007, I joined the public service and I joined as a facilitator. And it wasn't until I bumped into a Peter Carter, he and I started very much on the same day. He was one of those who I always admire and always put up on hero status as a public service person who was able to do the integration and the really strong implementation of what I'd call project management culture. Peter was just able to keep stepping into the fire, keep taking on the challenges. He was as cool as a cucumber, very well read on his project management, but he also had a brilliant skill with knowing about facilitation and was directing me to books by Bob Dick and others about how to get participatory activities with your groups and actually hear what the groups are wanting to hear and talk about rather than what are they are being directed to follow. And he was very courageous, very supportive of the process. He's now a very senior project manager with DFAT. The first workshop I ended up getting, the ATO brought that in to try and make sure that their design of forms and services was going to be driven through facilitated engagements with the, both the building teams and the delivery teams, as well as the people who are tasked with using those forms, the end client. So we got into that process and by the close of that, we'd done four years worth of workshops, well over 40 workshops in that time period. We just started moving into more and more space within the ATO. I was chair of their design facilitation community practice. I'd asked I could become the facilitator and so I was set up as a specialist facilitator within the ATO. The planning workshops are workshops to do with challenges where people are sort of struggling to do things, where teams are fighting with each other, risk workshops, all those sorts of things. I'll take all that work and from there I started doing a wide range of workshops, communications, all sorts of things. They just kept coming broader and broader and was pulling through something like 108, 110 workshops a year. So it was a phenomenal work. I came over the Department of Agriculture. I just received a boost in funding and there was a whole lot of meetings taking place so we sit down there and work with them and started building up an awareness and on the same year 2015 it was I started in July and I think in September we started the government facilitation community practice and that little organization with about 13 to 15 people met just to have a chat if you were curious about facilitation and more and more people got sort of involved. I think now the numbers are around 700 in that group. So it's gone across the governments, it's gone across departments, federal, state. We've also got local. We've also brought in people who are providers of facilitation services to the government so that everyone can understand what environment we're operating in. And that really grew during the uh, COVID situations. It was making sure that if people were bidding or being involved with work to government, they had an understanding of what the operating environment was, could ask questions to the community of practice, 
to do that. And meanwhile, the community practice started talking about things that challenged other people, such as dealing with difficult personalities in workshops. Well, when we ran our first one of that, we were oversubscribed. We just had so many people join that. And word of mouth moved it on. So we're very happy to have that word of mouth, getting people involved. It blossomed. Understanding briefings, how to do a briefing, most people don't know. Yeah. Pulling an agenda together, people just think it's pretty simple to do and it's a great thing. My intent was to set that up with no restrictions as to which departments. If you've got an interest to it or a curiosity about facilitation, come and join us. Spend 60 minutes once every four weeks having a chin wag, having a chat, having a discussion, raising questions, hearing from experts about what's going on. It was that that sort of gave people more confidence to sort of say, why don't you have a try? And it just kept ha happening. The structure that we put to it is very much based on relevance. If it's not relevant material, why talk about it? And if I'm taking a James Samana or something, have him talk about the subject that he's most passionate about, because that's gonna bring most blossom into that community that's possible. They're gonna hear from someone who's really driven, who's really strong on that topic, and it's going to have much more benefit to the group who are listening. That culture, I think, is being kept on, and I think Jamie Nichols will be taking over there. The community of practice is going to be a strong role to be able to continue that and move it forward. And Jamie brings a strong, strong knowledge of technology. So technology being one of the key ways forward, I'm still a face-to-face -face sort of guy. <laughs> so that's what we all see growth, I think. So that gives a bit of a potted history and I've done through there with uh, the Department of Agriculture. I've gone right through that process with them for the last seven and a half years. So something like 18 years and about 19, 20,000 hours of facilitation over that time period. And that's where I first met you was in that uh, facilitators community practice. It was just so impressive to see the depth of experience and knowledge uh, that you've gotten brought to this, but also the fact that you were able to even create such a wide spanning piece of work that really brought benefit to the efficacy of whoever attended, whether they be from agriculture or health or defense or across the system, you raised the bar of what it means to be a good facilitator and how the tool of facilitation can be used, not just in training sessions or learning, but in process driven sessions, even in meetings and, and yes. um, secretariat work, the messages that you've got are really going to make a difference and help a lot of people build their facilitation, build the recognition of facilitation and actually make change in areas that that require facilitation. So thank you so much for, for allowing me to interview you. James, it's been a pleasure. And again, I so much encourage what you're doing in terms of being able to drive greater awareness across those on the outside of government who are providing services in to have a strong understanding of the culture and the behaviours and things that go on. This podcast of yours and these examples that you do with interviewing, fantastic. Couldn't encourage it more. Thanks so much, Nick. I remember seeing some pictures of you. We went to Mexico to meet with the International Association of Facilitators there, you know, climbed the, the pyramids. I think I even saw a photo of you with the uh, El Chapo <laughs> wrestling mask on. Uh, you have done your research. <laughs> a little bit, bit scary.